Welcome back to another episode of Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything that I bought to make this car feel a little bit more like this car. But unfortunately, this car had to die to make this all possible. And guys, you wouldn't wish the fate of this E55 upon even your worst car enemies. The circumstances that led up to this E55 being parted out will absolutely blow your mind, and honestly, They'll have you a little bit freaked out about bringing your car practically anywhere for repair work. Okay, so in my quest to make my 2005 E320 CDI the diesel AMG car that Mercedes never built or sold in the United States, I've decided to simply steal a bunch of parts from the AMG version of the 211 at the time, the E55. So in a minute, I'm gonna show you all the awesome parts that I got off of this parts car. I have some on the ground as well. We're gonna be ripping off the bumper from the E320 to take a look at this really dinky intercooler that everybody keeps on telling me me about uh, and we might even polish out that really faded headlight but first I got to tell you the story behind the parts car because this is completely insane and I know you guys will appreciate it so I got all these parts from a 2005 e55 AMG now this was a totally normal stock car until it was vandalized it was keyed all over the place insurance totaled it out and it was sold to a flipper who had it repainted uh, at Mako so a very very cheap paint job someone bought it from the flipper and started to do some modifications but first he brought it to the Mercedes-Benz dealership for a ticking noise from the engine. They diagnosed it as collapsed lifters and they replaced an entire bank of lifters. So this means the camshaft comes off, uh, they have to loosen up the camshaft, sprocket of course, the timing chain, uh, a bunch of work on the top end, and then they replace the lifters. At the same time, somehow he convinced the dealership to do a bunch of performance modifications. So he brought the parts to the dealership and they installed them. Now, I've personally never seen this. I'm gonna assume maybe he knows someone at the dealership but I've seen the receipts for all of this work, guys. This was a Mercedes-Benz dealership that charged this guy to install aftermarket parts along with fixing uh, the lifter. Uh, so what he has done uh, are some basic bolt-on type stuff. So headers, injectors, a smaller supercharger pulley, and a larger crank pulley. So remember that. We're gonna talk about that crank pulley here in a minute because you won't believe what they did with that. Um, so he gets the car back, uh, and then he pretty, uh, pretty soon he sells the car to another guy. So it's got all these modifications, it's got new lifters, and he sells it to another guy and almost immediately the engine locks up so this guy buys the car the engine locks up and then he brings it to his mercedes-benz kind of like car club uh, and they take a look at the engine for him and they're like look you you're gonna need a lot of engine work it's completely locked up so he sells the car almost immediately after buying it for about a $4,000 loss. He sells it for uh, $2,500 to the guy that I got all these parts from. This is a guy that bought the car with the intention of parting it out and making money, which can be, as you're gonna find out, a very lucrative proposition. So he buys the parts car and he digs into the engine a little bit further and he finds out that the camshaft sprocket on the side that they did the lifters on broke off. So that, it destroyed the cam, it, it locked up the engine. Uh, so they definitely did something wrong there. This this was only a couple months after the job was done uh, and I'm not sure on the mileage but I think maybe a few hundred something like that so very soon after they did the lifter job camshaft sprocket breaks off destroys the cam locks up the engine and basically ruins the engine now that is not the worst part here guys uh, I told you he did all the performance modifications there so after uh, the guy bought the car that the, the guy that's parting it out he dropped the oil pan this is what he found on the pickup tube that is all gasket material so basically when they did the lifter job they must have scraped up all the gaskets cleaned it up and I don't know what they did but they funneled it all into the crankcase uh, and it got sucked up in the pickup tube so definitely not a good situation to be in either also he tried to remove the aftermarket crankshaft pulley because these things are big money and he was gonna sell it and he couldn't get it off now these things can be a little bit of a pain to get off but here's why he couldn't get it off the guy at the dealership welded the crankshaft pulley onto the crankshaft. He must have lost the keyway and he decided it was a good idea to take out a welder and weld on an AMG crankshaft. So he simply welded the pulley onto the crank. Guys, this is stuff I've never seen, I've never heard of before, it's completely nuts. I've seen the receipts from the dealership, guys. This was done at a Mercedes-Benz dealership. Now, obviously, you can't put a blanket statement here and say that this is gonna happen to your car. I mean, the dealership, has the best technicians in the country, but every once in a while, there's always a small percentage of, of bad apples that get through. Every once in a while, there's gonna be a tech there that doesn't know what he's doing. So I don't know the exact circumstances here, uh, but the bottom line is, 
This is the type of work that they put into this E55. This is how it left the shop. It completely screwed over this guy who had just bought this car, trusted the dealership with a lot of money. The lifter job alone was $2,500. This guy got totally screwed, and this is why you need pre-purchase inspections. You need service history, I would normally say, but in this case, it would indicate that it had work done at the dealership. So. Guys, this is not a normal situation at all, but you just gotta understand when you're looking for a used car, use every possible tool that you have. Carfax, pre-purchase inspection, get someone out there that knows what they're doing with that particular model or you can be completely screwed over. Uh, now, the guy that I bought all the parts from, he's making a killing. He's got a good transmission, a good interior, a good body, a good blower. He sold me these brakes and, and, and the stuff I'm about to show you uh, for about 1100 bucks plus shipping, so like 14 50. So he's making a killing on a $2,500 investment. So I guess the lesson here is if you have the space, buy a part out car, uh, part it out and make a bunch of money in the process because I've seen deals like this go down very similar to where guys can make three, four, five thousand dollars uh, on a two thousand dollar part out car. It's absolutely amazing. So with that said, I'm sure you guys are all really excited to go search for your next used car. So let's take a look at all the awesome parts that I got off of this completely destroyed parts car. All right guys, we're gonna start off with the obvious and something that I'm so excited about and that is that I'm doing a complete E55 AMG brake swap on the CDI. So that means we're getting the eight piston front Brembo brake calipers from the E55. We're getting the four piston brake calipers out back and then the massive rotors to go along with them. Uh, those are on order from FCP Euro with some brand new uh, Akibono brake pads. So I'm really excited about this because I want this to look like a factory option. So what I'm thinking right now uh, is to just simply restore these calipers, but I wanna keep them the factory color with the factory decal. So this could be like an option that you would have checked off when you ordered this car brand new, maybe like a suspension and braking package that they never had on these cars. Uh, so speaking of suspension, back here we have the E55 sway bars. So I have the front right here, this massive sway bar, and the rear right here. Now uh, the links on here, I'm going to replace uh, one of them is broken. I think it's uh, one of the ones in the rear. Yeah, here we go. This link right here is missing the rubber on there. I'm just gonna freshen these up, clean them up, get some new bushings in them, uh, and bolt these up to the car. And being that they're both 211 chassis, uh, we shouldn't have any issues bolting up the sway bars. Now, the brakes are not a direct bolt-on. As you'll see here, I have both of the front spindles. Uh, and then on the ground, which we're gonna get into in a minute here, uh, I have the rear uh, bearings, uh, the whole assembly and everything with the backing plate uh, because the larger brake calipers, the bolt holes will not line up where the factory CDI smaller brakes uh, would have normally uh, bolted up to. Now some guys said you can do something with these bolts like elongate them or make them larger on the spindles on the car, but considering I got this all for a pretty good price, I thought it'd be a good idea to just swap over all the AMG stuff, make it kind of more of like a direct bolt-on replacement. Uh, so I'll clean this all up, make sure uh, that we do have good wheel bearings, kind of refurbish everything, put it all in the car, and it is going to be amazing. You guys may have seen these thrust arms with these awesome bushings in a previous video. Uh, these did not come on the part out E55, although that would have been an amazing deal. Uh, I actually got these from FCP Euro. They sell the complete arm uh, with the poly thrust arm bushing already installed. So this is really gonna firm up the front end and make the car handle a lot better. So I'm really excited. Uh, I think these will complement all the suspension work that I'm doing on this car very nicely. And I think one of the joints on one of my thrust arms is loose anyway. So I had to do something in this area regardless. Now you guys already saw that I have the complete rear spindle assembly with the hub, with the backing plate and everything ready to bolt on our four piston Brembo brake calipers out back. But I also bought the E55 rear axles. Uh, I believe these are gonna be a lot beefier than the factory axles that come uh, on an E320 or an E500. But I'm not 100% sure that they're any stronger than the axles that come on a CDI. It is possible that Mercedes-Benz upgraded the axles on the CDI because these cars do come with a lot of torque. So we're gonna lift the car up in the air right now, uh, take a look for ourselves, see if these axles uh, look any different than the factory ones. And we're gonna compare the factory sway bars to these massive AMG sway bars. All I can say guys is that I really hope these E55 axles fit because these things look puny. I measured them. Uh, they are 24 millimeter in diameter and check out what we have here on the E55. 
about 32 and a half. So these things, you can just tell by looking at them, uh, are just way meatier, way beefier, and I think that we will break these axles because this car already put down over 400 pound-feet of torque to the tires, and I have some fuel upgrades on the way. We got a bunch of stuff coming. I have a feeling we're gonna be putting down five to 600 pound-feet of torque, and once we strap on those Mickey Thompson drag radials at the drag strip, this thing's gonna dead hook and probably twist these like a pretzel. So crossing my fingers that the splines work. That is uh, my only uh, possibility of not being able to use these axles and possibly having to get an E55 differential is if they're splined differently. So uh, we'll find that out soon. So let's take a look at sway bars. There's not that big of a difference with the sway bar. I measured it up. Uh, the rear sway bar on this car is only three millimeters, uh, you know, bigger than the factory one. And then up front, although this looks really huge, take a look at the sway bar that comes on the CDI. It's practically the same. And what's really weird is that this CDI sway bar only measures in at about a little less than one millimeter smaller than the one from the E55. So probably not worth a bunch of money to swap sway bars. I got these practically for free because I bought everything else here. Uh, and I'll still probably just swap it in. It is a little bit larger than the ones on the CDI, but I'm gonna assume that Maybe the major difference here in the sway bars on these cars are the links. They're probably AMG specific links and specific sway bar bushings for the AMG cars as well. So I'll put it on here anyway, and I think that they're going to complement the coilovers that I'm getting for this car as well. So this car does not come with aromatic suspension. You just have your normal coil spring and strut up front and then a shock and coil spring out back. And I am getting adjustable coilovers for this car. So it is gonna handle amazing. So I'll be able to not only adjust the ride height of the car, uh, but the firmness as well. So I can really fine tune this perfectly. Uh, so with that said, let us rip off this front bumper and take a look at this little tiny intercooler. Apparently has a little bit of an oil leak and it looks like I got a free bungee cord with this car. <laughs> That's awesome. totally almost dropped the bumper when I was taking it off and it just goes to show you uh, how less precautious you are when you're dealing with a bumper that you know you're going to be replacing anyway. Uh, but it is off and check out this nice little surprise. Look at this intercooler. Uh, as if I already didn't want to replace this thing, it looks like it's damaged as well. This does not look good. I mean, this has got to be leaking air because what this is here is a little bit of oil buildup. Uh, the turbo, a couple hundred thousand miles, kind of normal on a diesel to have a little bit of oil uh, in the intercooler and the intercooler piping. So that oil escaped and attracted a lot of dirt. So we definitely have a boost leak here. It's smashed in right here as well, and there's no damage on the bumper. So to be honest with you, uh, I really don't know what's going on here, but this kind of excites me even more to replace it with something that flows uh, a lot better. So I've measured this up. Uh, it's 26 inches uh, wide. It is four and a half inches tall and I forget how deep it is, but uh, we definitely have some room here to play around with. So I will be ordering up an aftermarket intercooler. So we have some room in here. So we can definitely go like a little bit thicker on the core. Uh, and then what's important as well is kind of getting uh, this to be more of a uh, more of a, a nicer bend. This is kind of a harsh transition from here to here. Uh, and then what's cool is we have some really nice factory tubing right here. So I'll try and reuse as much as possible. There's nothing wrong with this at all. And then it'll fit in here nice and factory-like. Uh, so very excited to get rid of uh, what we've discovered to be a totally broken intercooler. <laughs> All right, 
so the passenger side headlight turned out really, really nicely. Uh, and if you guys want to protect your lenses after you clean them up, uh, just put a little bit of ceramic coating on them and that should protect them for many, many years from UV uh, sun damage, which is what makes them yellow in the first place. Uh, so you're gonna let this sit on there uh, for about a minute and then you just take a clean microfiber and just wipe the ceramic coating off like this and these things look amazing. The ceramic coating uh, kind of really brings out the shine in everything. So I'll leave a uh, link to a couple videos that I did uh, showing you guys exactly how to apply ceramic coating and of course a coupon code uh, down there as well. But check this out guys. This is a headlight that is basically a lost cause. I did two stages of wet sanding. I used uh, some coarse compound and it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see it in here a little bit, but yeah, right, right there. See all this stuff? right in here, that is on the inside of the lens. So there's really nothing we can do about this lens, except this gives us the opportunity to replace these lenses and do what we did with the E55. So I know this car is pretty dirty and still has a smashed up fender, <laughs> but uh, I lost the footage to how I did this, how I took apart the entire headlight and painted uh, the inside chrome trim black and replaced the lenses. So that will give me an awesome opportunity to replace these lenses. They're only like 60 bucks anyway uh, and make these look awesome as well. And I might even swap out the projector to a newer cell projector as well. Before I end this video, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you guys who had commented in the last video with suggestions on why my garage was having a major electrical issue. I had explained that I had some work done on my house, then the electrical company came back out to reconnect the service, and the very next day when I went out to film last week's video, I flipped on a light, and all of a sudden I heard a sizzling, and one of my power strips was on fire, smoking up the entire place. All the lights were flickering. The whole garage was basically shorting out, and you guys had mentioned that I was possibly missing a neutral, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, the electricians found that there was a bar inside of the panel that connects both banks of circuit breakers and that bar was totally missing. Now this happened right after the electrical company had reconnected the service so I wonder what happened there. Either way we're back in action. I have heat, I have electricity and I'm back to making videos in the garage so thank you guys so much for all of your suggestions. Uh, with that being said I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new and most importantly do not weld your crank crankshaft pulley to the crankshaft, that is not what you're supposed to do. Uh, have a great day guys and I'll catch you all in the next video.